I'd like to give you a demonstration of model monitoring in the context of how someone might use it in the real world. Our story starts with a model, and the one I'm using comes from this very nice blog article that was written by a couple of my colleagues about a churn prediction task. The idea here is that your company sells a mobile game app, and you'd like to predict which users are most likely to churn, by which I mean abandon using your app. The business value in finding those users is that if you can identify those who are most likely to quit, you can try to reach out to them or provide some sort of incentives to increase their engagement. To solve this problem, we start with some Google Analytics data, which gives us uh, demographic information like the player's country, environmental data like the operating system on the device they're using, as well as lots of behavioral data, like which events they triggered and what count of those events as they were playing our game. Our next stop is BigQuery. The raw Google Analytics data is stored in BigQuery, which is Google's enterprise data warehouse. BigQuery makes it easy to view, analyze, pre-process, and train a model using standard SQL. So let me just show you what we have here. This uh, view called train is the pre-processed information. So I've taken the raw Google Analytics data and sort of massaged it into a form that's readily usable to train a model with. You can see it has, uh, here's the schema for the training data. It has all these event counts. It has uh, timing information, the user pseudo ID, the country operating system and language of the user and so on. Probably the most interesting field is down here, churn. That's an actual indicator. It's one or zero to say whether that user indeed did churn or not. And so that's what we call the label in our labeled data set. And we're going to train the model to predict that value if it has all of the other information except that field. So how do we train a model in BigQuery? Actually, very simply use a statement like this. This SQL says create or replace this model, churn log reg. The model type is logistic regression. The, the label column, which we're going to use to define what the model predicts, is churned. And that corresponds to the field I just showed you in the schema. And then we're going to use the data from this train uh, table. But let's say we want to use this model in a different context. All we have to do is click on the model. And over on the right, we have an export model button where we can enter a Google Cloud Storage bucket click Submit, and then BigQuery will save all of the artifacts of our model in a reusable fashion into cloud storage. So this is Google's Vertex AI models page, and this is where we want to go in order to import the model that we just exported to cloud storage. So we'll click the Import button. Uh, we'll give our model a name, tell it which region. And here we can either create a new container or have the service build a new container for us, or we can import an existing container. Given that, I'm going to tell it where to look for the model. mco-mm model, I think I called it. Um, we select the framework and the framework version, and the other options here are scikit-learn and xgboost beside TensorFlow. And then uh, I'll go ahead and click import and it will actually grab the information from cloud storage and create a new model. It takes a little bit, but not too long. Actually, there it is already now. And the next step is to go to the endpoints page and to create an endpoint. You can tie a, uh, an endpoint to multiple models and do traffic splitting and all that stuff, but we're going to use a very simple example where we're just going to go 100% to the model that I just created and we'll we'll create an endpoint called endpoint. Uh, we add the model that I called model. We can give lots of information about how we want the computing to be done. One required option is the machine type. We'll choose N1 standard 2. Click continue and then uh, give it again the location and create and now it's going to create an endpoint for us. This takes a little bit longer um, but it's not too bad, and uh, I've already done that for our model. The one I'm going to use in the further examples is called Churn2. So next, let's go to a Jupyter Notebook where I want to show you a different view of things. So this is a Jupyter Notebook hosted on Google's Colab service, and essentially this will walk you through most of the things I'm showing you here in this demo so that you can try it for yourself. We'll share a link with you later on in the talk so that you can access this notebook. 
Um, but what this really illustrates is the idea that almost everything in Google Cloud can be managed in one of any of three ways, really. The console web UI that I've been showing you, as well as uh, the G Cloud command line tool and uh, programmatically using any of our supported client libraries. And this notebook essentially does most of what I'm doing in, in, in this demo using a combination of Python code and the gcloud command. So I'm not going to go through the actual steps, uh, but I will invite you to try them all for yourself. It basically has you uh, set up a bunch of things to get started. Uh, then it uh, programmatically imports your model, the equivalent of what I just showed you, programmatically then deploys an endpoint. So again, using Python to do those last two steps. Um, this one I will run just to show you that we can run a prediction test directly from a Python client. So uh, here's the, let me make this a little bit bigger. Here's the uh, request. And as you can see, I've fabricated data so that it uh, meets all the requirements for the model. And then I get a response. So this is live. It's telling me that the chance that this particular user of the game will um, churn is uh, 0.87 and a conversely 0.13 probability that they won't churn. So the predicted churn value is one. It's telling us this is a likely churn candidate. So now that we're convinced that our model is actually responding to predictions, we want to monitor it. And the idea, as you've already heard, is to keep an eye on the model to make sure that we get notified if, it's, if the data that we're sent, that's being sent to the model is deviating from uh, over time or from the data that we use to train the model. So we specify some input for this modeling job, specifically the, uh, an email address where we want to not get, uh, receive notifications, um, a sampling rate for how much of the log data we want to be examining, a monitoring interval, which I'm setting to 3,600 seconds. So once an hour, we're going to run this analysis job. In this case, we give it the schema for the training data. Sometimes the service can figure out automatically, um, sort of infer the schema. But in this particular case, the, the schema wasn't part of the artifacts that were imported, so we have to direct it to the BigQuery table I showed you earlier that captures all the schema information. And then I set a bunch of thresholds for uh, drift and skew. So this is for um, things I want to, to monitor between training data and production data, as well as things I want to monitor over time as the model is, is serving traffic. And what will happen next is you'll receive an email at the address you specified informing you that your monitoring job has been created. Included in that will be some useful information down at the bottom, like the endpoint name, the job name, the monitoring job name itself, as well as a path in cloud storage to where it's going to store all your statistics and anomalies. The last thing I want to show you is how we can actually verify that the monitoring job is doing what we're expecting it to do. So this code, which you can access in the notebook, is essentially doing a load test. It's r running repeated prediction requests with data that is closely aligned with the training data with two exceptions. I've um, modified the mean and the standard deviation of one numerical value, and I've modified the distribution of one categorical value. And with that, we should be able to see that the, the model alerts to tell us uh, that the training is skewing from the, or rather the production traffic is skewing from the training data. And it should also identify which features are triggering the, the problem or, or exceeding the thresholds we've set. So this is a sample alert message. This came to my email and it's basically giving me information about the, the model, the endpoint, the monitoring job, and which anomalies it detected. So it's giving me the actual features that exceeded the thresholds. Uh, and in this case, we're only seeing um, training and, and uh, production skew because uh, I ran a very short test. If I had run a longer test on the order of an hour or so, then I would also get um, drift anomalies triggered. And these alerts can also be viewed in the um, Cloud Console. So I'll show you that very quickly. 
Um, if you go into the endpoints page, something that I don't think I pointed out earlier, but that I should have, you can actually uh, see a new column here called monitoring, which will tell you whether monitoring uh, a monitoring job is run or not based on whether that says enabled or disabled. And then um, you get some performance metrics. You can see my load test running there. I get latency data, response uh, distribution, and so on. And if I keep drilling into this, I can see a history of all the alerts, which features alerted, what type of alert. And again, lately I've been doing short load tests, so I've only gotten the training serving SKU. But you can go back and get all the information about this, what the threshold was, when it fired, etc. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to use monitor model monitoring and what it can do for you and how well it's integrated with the rest of our Google Cloud Platform products. Thank you for watching.